the Canadian press. Essentially, the battle against the fight against terrorism started in the, the cockpit. Um, it started with Jason and, and Leroy. Melody Homer is the widow of Leroy Homer, the co-pilot of United Airlines Flight 93. On the morning of September 11, 2001, United 93 was hijacked by four Al-Qaeda terrorists. Their likely plan was to use it as a suicide weapon, targeting the U.S. Capitol. Homer was born in Hamilton, Ontario, but now makes her home in Marlton, New Jersey. Homer is now speaking about the actions of her husband and his pilot, Jason Dahl, for the first time. Both pilots were aware that there had been cockpit intrusions and that um, aircraft had hit the World Trade Center. Mm. Um, they were aware of that minutes before um, their cockpit was intruded. Mm. And um, Leroy was able to keep his mic on to alert air traffic control that you know, the hijacking was um, taking place. Mm -hmm. And then at some time after that point, he would have been removed from the cockpit because then during the cockpit voice re um, recording, right. Right. he is not yeah. um, heard on that tape at all. Homer doesn't discount the now widely accepted story of heroism associated with Flight 93. How a passenger revolt forced the airliner down before it could reach the terrorist's intended target. For Melody, that story has lacked one key element all of these years. How her husband Leroy and his captain, Jason Dahl, also went down fighting like heroes. They did say that he was not found in the cockpit. And, you know, there was no sort of understanding or explanation of why he wasn't. Um, and at that point in time, you know, there was sort of... Um, an issue with the cell phone calls and what people thought they had or had not seen. And, right. and um, so, you know, of course, there was the, the theory that both pilots had been killed and were laying outside of um, mm -hmm. the cockpit, which, in fact, was not no. accurate at all. Homer will never know exactly what happened on the plane that day, but she believes Leroy was likely knocked unconscious and dragged from the cockpit, not immediately killed, as was originally thought. The vision of somebody just coming in and brutally killing Leroy in the cockpit, which had, you know, been, of course, all the experts had said that that's what would have happened. Um, and to, to know that that didn't happen and that he died with everyone else, you know, in an unconscious state without pain was a huge relief to me. Mike Blanchfield, The Canadian Press, Marlton, New Jersey.